Greetings to all of you. I bring greetings from Faith Baptist Bible College and also from Emmanuel Baptist Church. Thank you for giving me this uh, great opportunity to uh, bring a message from the Word of God. The scripture portion has been already read. And today my topic is the kind of people we ought to be. What kind of people we ought to be, that's the, uh, uh, that's the message uh, from Second Peter. <clears throat> Second Peter, the background of this uh, epistle is very interesting. Peter is waiting for his execution. And while he is waiting, his mind went to the eschatological event, the end time events. And that's what he is describing in chapter 2 of uh, Second Peter. And he begins, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So this phrase, day of the Lord, is very important. Day of the Lord is a time when God would directly intervene in human affair. That's the day of the Lord. When will he, die? When will he do it? His intervention will start with rapture followed by the great tribulation. And we see that, that during the tribulation, God will intervene, God will judge on this earth, and then it will be followed by the uh, second coming of our Lord. So Peter is saying the day of the Lord. Day of the Lord is not one incident. It goes on up to the end of our human history. And in this place, Peter is referring to the end event. It begins with rapture, tribulation, but it ends at the end of the millennial kingdom, thousand years reign of Christ. This is the end. How it is going to be end, Peter says, in the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, and heaven shall pass away with great noise and element shall melt with fervent heat. This art we love. My house is located in, the, in this art. This art has a special place in cosmic history. It is the place where we live. This is the place where we die. This is the place where my parents are buried. But though we love this blue planet, but yet there will be a time when it will be no more. And Peter is talking about that event. As he is waiting for his execution, he says in chapter 1, verse 14, he says, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. This is the background. When he is waiting for his execution, his mind goes to the end event. And with that view in his mind, he is giving this, uh, this passage. He is writing this passage. He, he says, a day will come when everything will, be, will vanish. He, he continues to say, he said, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and earth also. I believe that as the, the cosmos, the universe began uh, uh, by God, it came into existence from nothing, so also this, the cosmos will go also, will also disappear. It has a beginning and there will be an end to this entire universe and this will disappear and then God will recreate an, uh, a, a, new, a, a new universe. New uh, heavens and the earth will come, as it is written in uh, Revelation chapter 21. John says, I saw a new heaven and new earth. Okay? That's the background. 
as uh, Peter is dwelling about this end time, when the entire universe will disappear. Uh, when, uh, you know that story, and I mean, you know that the event, thousand years of rain, and then Satan will be released, and he will have the final rebellion, and Jesus Christ will put down that rebellion, and then the end will come. Time began with creation, and time will end when this universe come to non-existence, and God will recreate, will create again a new heaven and new earth. In view of this, Peter is giving some instruction about our life. That's I want to bring to you. Many times we, we, uh, we dwell into the dramatic events. We make many, uh, many uh, novels about second coming of Christ. Perhaps you have read. But every time when the coming of the Lord is mentioned, along with that, there is a mention, then what? If the rapture will happen, then what? What, how shall we exist? How shall we behave? How shall we conduct ourselves? These moral instructions are given. But many times, we forget about the moral instruction. We only want to dwell into the dramatic events, and then we speculate things, whether it will be a nuclear war or whether some other kind of war, and what will happen, all these things, very interesting. But we forget that these are mentioned so that our behavior, our conduct may become uh, like a believer's conduct. That's what Peter is saying. If we really believe that new heavens and the new earth will come, if we believe that Jesus is going to come back again, then what kind of uh, people we ought to be? Number one, we should be faithful in conduct. Faithful in conduct. Look at verse 14, uh, 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 11. 11 and 14, he said, seeing then, because we know that it is going to happen, the universe is going to disappear. God is going to judge finally uh, on this earth. Though uh, we love this earth, it will disappear. And he said, we know this cataclysmic event is going to take place, but in view of that, he said, oh, he said, verse 11, seeing then, uh, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy livings and godliness? This is the most important part when we discuss about the coming of the Lord. We must not forget that dramatic event that will take place in view of that, we are asked to shape up our conduct, to review our life. And that's what he's saying. He said, uh, um, what ought he to be in holy conversation and godliness? So holiness and godliness is mentioned that if we really believe that Jesus is going to come back and he's going to uh, take the church home, if we really believe that it will be followed by thousand years of Christ, uh, reign of Christ, if we really believe that new earth and new heaven is going to come, then we ought to live accordingly. What is that live accordingly? He said, in holy living, holy living, and we should be, uh, um, we should have, uh, we should pursue godliness. And he repeats this. That's what tells me that it is very important in the mind of Peter. So Peter is going to die, and he is giving an instruction to his reader, and twice he mentioned, look at verse 14 again. He said, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such thing, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. 
Almost like he is exhorting the believers, he is exhorting the members and the people of Liberty Baptist Church to have a holy living, to live a blameless life. And almost he, he, is, he is exhorting us, almost he said, you should be like Jesus. Should be like Jesus. Each one of us walking in our villages and towns and neighborhood as Jesus, small Jesus is walking. That kind of life we should have. And in the Bible again and again we are, we are uh, exhorted to have a, a, a life of holiness. We should be without spot and blameless. We should be holy in our conduct. In chapter 1, verse 15, 1 Peter 1, 15, uh, uh, Peter said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. In Thess 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13, So that he may establish your heart blameless in holiness before our God. And just go on and on in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's what, again and again, in almost every book of the Bible, the exhortation is given that we should live a holy life. Yet, our lives are not what it ought to be. Uh, British ruled India 200 years. First East India Company ruled 100 years. Then the British government directly ruled 100 years. 200 years we were under British. Yet our Christian percentage is 2.5. 2.5. Why? Because the life they lived is not life in holiness and godliness. That's the reason. When William Carey came to India and he sought a place to start his mission compound, he was not given a place. So he went to the place which was controlled by Dutch. And there he started Sri Rampur Mission. I want to ask every one of us to look at ourselves. Before we try to conquer the world with the gospel of Christ, we must be conquering our evil desire, sinful nature. Then only we can, we can project uh, uh, ourselves to the world that see what Christ has done to our lives. And if you believe in Jesus, <coughs> your life will be like this. Unfortunately, we fail to do it. And I ask you to examine your life and to live a holy life. If you really believe that Jesus is going to come back, then we should clean up our life. And I speak to myself. I speak to myself. Sometimes I hate myself because the, the pull of sin nature is so great. So great. Every day is a day of struggle. And in that struggle, by the grace of God, by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must win. We must win. People need to see the, see the Lord in our lives. I was reading a, an article on the other day, and the writer was explaining the difference between justification by faith and then uh, in James, uh, justification is not by faith. He said, by works. Uh, you show your faith, I'll show my work. That's what James says. So how do we explain this? This man has a really insight in this. He said, 
as far as God is concerned, we are justified by faith. But when we talk about the world, they do not see our faith in Jesus. They see our conduct. And that's why James is writing to his readers. He said, your conduct should be such that your justification should be proven by your own work. And I come to you and I challenge your heart to follow the path of holiness. Secondly, if we really believe that Jesus is coming back, we should be far more interested in life beyond the world. Life beyond the world. That's very important. Sometimes we get so hooked up with our house, with our job, with our friends, with our, our TV. You know, there are hundreds and tens of um, things. There are hundreds of things to, uh, that pulls us. Like magnet, we are there. But if we really believe that Jesus will come back and then he will uh, wrap up the whole history of mankind and start a new heaven and new earth, then we should be interested uh, in life beyond this world. Second Peter 3.13, Peter said, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. It's very, very important for us to keep our eyes on that event that our home will be in new heavens and new earth. And John has explained this very wonderfully in Revelation chapter 21. He says, I saw new heavens and new earth. The old things are gone. He said, let me read it for you. Um, 21. Verse 1, and John writes, he said, I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This is, this is the new heaven and new earth, and there will be new Jerusalem. This is the place where we will live. And Peter is asking his reader, he said, keep your eyes on that. Keep your eyes on that. We, he said, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heaven and new earth. Uh, this is very imp important. We are attracted by so many things, and we forget why we exist. We sometimes forget why we come to the church. We forget what is our final ambition. What are we trying to achieve in our life? We forget that. And Peter is reminding that we should keep our focus upward. Okay, in Hebrews chapter 11, when writer of the Hebrews talks about the heroes of faith, and he again and again reminds us that those people, those who exhibited faith in, book, uh, in chapter 11 of book of Hebrews, he said they kept their eyes beyond their world, the future world, they, they, they kept their eyes. Uh, regarding Abraham, Hebrews 11:10, the writer says, Abraham, for he, that means Abraham, looked for a city, which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. And again in verse 13, he writes, he says, These all died in faith, not having received promises, but having seen them far off, and were persuaded by them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They kept their eyes on that city. And verse 14, he said, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. A country. It's a new country, new place, new heaven, and new earth. 
even though the, they did not have the New Testament, somehow they came to know, like, like Abraham and other people came to know that there is a, a, a life beyond this earth. And this is the, in future, they are going to stay in that new place, new heaven and new earth. And they kept their focus on this. And I ask all of us that we all will keep in our, our focus on that place, that our final abode in New, <coughs> New Jerusalem, there we shall keep our heart in that place. As we live here, we should live like a pilgrim, keeping our eyes on that final destination. So we have seen, if we, uh, we believe in the, uh, in, in, in the coming of our Lord, we should be faithful in our conduct, we should be far more interested in life beyond this world, and third thing. Third thing is, we should be faithful in proclamation. Faithful in proclamation. That means we should be faithful in mission. We should be faithful in evangelism. We should be faithful in reaching out to the people. Um, he says in verse 15, verse 15, he said, look at this. He, he said, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15, a, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. He's saying because our Lord is not coming back because he wants people to be saved. That's why he is delaying his coming. And if you are not saved because of you, the Lord is withholding his coming. He is withholding his judgment. That's why. And he said he is giving and he is giving uh, a chance to the churches to preach the gospel to every man so that every man can be saved. And Jesus is giving that opportunity to all of us. He said in Second Peter, in the same chapter, in verse 9, he said the same thing. He said, Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some uh, count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. That's why the Lord is withholding his judgment. Lord is withholding his uh, time of his coming so that we may get a chance to preach and the sinners may get a chance to be saved. This is the reason. Peter is asking us to get busy with the work of evangelism. Now I know that you are supporting at least two Indians from this church. But at the same time, we should not forget that God has brought thousands upon thousands of Indians to this country. We have a great mission field here. In almost from every tribe, people are, uh, are gathering here in this country. And it has become one of the greatest mission field. And in that mission field, we ought to preach. We ought to share the word of God. Yeah, the, he said that all should come to the saving knowledge. That's why all should come. And uh, this word all is a very important word. All means all, and that's all, the definition of all. All means all, and that's all. And God is waiting for salvation of all. Now, that all started with the promise to Abraham. He said, in thee all the families of the earth shall, will be blessed. You remember that? That means God is including every one of us. The message is not for white, black, or brown people. It is for all, everybody, in every nook and corner of this globe that uh, is within God's plan. And from the beginning, God has shown that the gospel must not be limited to some uh, uh, privileged person. It should go out to everyone. And he said to Abraham, 
in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And then when God selected or elected children of Israel, why did he do it? He said in Exodus 9:16, he said, and in every deed for this cause I have raised thee up. God, Jehovah is talking about to the Israel. He said, because of this I have raised, raised thee up for to show in thee my power and my name may be declared throughout all the earth. That is the reason that God has elected Israel. And when you look at the map and you can see that, that the land of Israel is placed in the middle of the earth. Middle of the earth. How is it middle of the earth? In one way, Egyptian civilization, the Mesopotamian civilization, the Greek and Rome, everybody, you know, if, you, if they want to have any business or communication, they have to go through the land of Israel. In that sense, it is the center of the, the earth, and God placed them in that strategic place. Why? So that all people will come to know about Jehovah, about God. Same thing he said when he made the temple, 1 King 8.43. He said, hear thou, this is, uh, uh, Solomon is praying, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that stranger calleth to thee for all, that all people of the earth may know thy name. God has focused on the globe, everyone. And I like what Paul said. He said, I'm ready to come to Rome also. You remember that in the first chapter of the book of Romans? I, I'm ready to come. You know, he said, I'm debtor to the Greeks uh, and Jews. He talks about then, and when we go to the end of the book, he said, uh, I plan to go to Spain also. He is thinking about the globe. That at that time, these were the civilized globe. You know, he says, I want to come to Rome, I want to go to Spain. Though he is located in one place, but he is thinking about the globe. And that's what the evangelism means. When God made the temple, he said, from this place, so that all people know the power of God. And through the prophet Isaiah, God invited all the people. Isaiah 45, verse 22, look unto me, Jehovah says, look unto me. And ye be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. All people, all people, that's why we all the churches should be, get involved to, 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 uh, to preach the gospel to all people. And in Olivet Discord, Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verse 10, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. He said, oh, yes, he is going to come back. But before that, the gospel has to be preached. And that's what Peter is talking about. God is delaying his coming, his return, because he wants to give chance to every sinner to receive Christ and be saved. And that's why we are here. I thank God that I have an opportunity to preach the gospel in India among my people. And I thank God that you are a partner in that endeavor. You are a partner. You have prayed. You have given. We thank God. Let us do our work joyfully together and try to win the sinners here and there and everywhere. We are working among Malayali-speaking people, uh, Telugu-speaking people, Manipuri, Oriya, and so many other tribes that is there. We are trying to go and preach the gospel. And in that um, great work, you are a partner. I thank you for your um, sacrifice for us. Fourthly, if we believe that Jesus is coming back soon, we should be steadfast in our faith. Verse 17, chapter 
3, verse 17, Paul says, I mean, Peter says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that ye know these things before, be, beware, lest ye also, being led away with error of wickedness, fall from your steadfastness. He said, look, as you try to uh, uh, reach out to people, as you look for the coming of the Lord, he said, he said, look, be careful of your own spiritual life so that you are not misled by some wrong doctrine. He said, uh, this is very important, that we should be well grounded in our Christian life. We should have a clear conviction what we believe and why we believe. And that's what Peter is saying. If we really believe that Jesus is coming back and uh, he, will, uh, he will take over this world and the world is going to uh, uh, have an end, then we need to make ourselves holy and also we should be well grounded in the word of God. And that's what he is telling to us. I thank God that God has brought me here this morning. I don't think it is an accident. I don't think it just happened. I think it is God has ordained in that way that we should be together this morning. And I challenge from this word of God that we all should be holy, we all should be looking forward to that final destination and we should be all should be busy with the proclamation of the gospel and we all should be steadfast in our Christian life. May God bless you. Thank you very much.